if you could live in a world where you were given a score based on how well you fit into society, would you be okay with it? A world where how you behave and your trustworthiness was rated by the people around you and the government. In 2016, we caught a glimpse of this world on a Netflix show called Black Mirror, a science fiction episode where the main character had a social score that people could see. And depending on her rating, she was either granted services or denied them from the public. When her score got too low, she was blacklisted out of society and denied services like transportation and healthcare. That would be a scary world to live in, right? Unfortunately, that TV show is no longer fiction. Flash forward to today, and we're seeing the same thing happen to the people in China. The scariest part is it's quickly making its way here to the US. Yes, you heard me right. It's already starting to appear here in the United States, right under your noses. And that's why today I wanted to expose the truth behind America's push towards a social credit system. Talk of a Chinese social credit system emerged in the early 2000s. Unsurprisingly, China was inspired by our FICO credit scoring system here in America, and they wanted to implement something similar on their own people. Instead of being based on how well you could borrow money, it would be based on your whole life and how you interacted in it. And it wasn't until 2014 when the State Council of China first outlined the plan for a social credit system to cover individuals, businesses, social interactions, and even the judicial administration. The system was expected to officially be rolled out by the end of 2020, although it would be put into practice at the same time of the announcement in 2014. Certain cities were deducting points for government petitions and online comments. Comments, others plan penalties for bailing on reservations, cheating in online games, and even for littering or jaywalking. How would you feel if that was you? constantly being monitored by the government and judged by your friends and family based on your public rating. In 2019, a Chinese city called Suzhou had introduced the country's first official public social credit system. Just like the Netflix show, the system focused on scoring and monitoring its residents' behavior, rewarding them for good behavior and demeriting those that were bad. Now, it was called the Civility Code, which encourages citizens to behave more and act better in social situations. This system would monitor and rate a citizen depending on their contributions to society, ultimately being a model citizen in the government's eyes. I don't know about you, but that to me is a problem. Being a model citizen in the eyes of the government is extremely discretionary. And what's okay to one person definitely might not be okay to somebody else. So who is the one that draws the line? You see, China's social credit system was built on top of China's current health code, a three-color scale used nationwide that decides whether or not an individual has a right to travel and enter public spaces. Which, if you want to know more about, I have a previous video I made where we go in depth about this topic, and you can find that video linked in the description or at the top right of your screen. Scary enough, the social rating application was controlled and monitored by the city's government, enforcing their very own merit and demeriting systems. Each user and citizen would start with a thousand points, and their performance will vary mostly on their conduct within society. Violations of traffic rules and bad road manners could result in negative points, while volunteering in society could actually earn you some. According to data from the People's Bank of China, the nation's central bank, the social credit system, System already covered 1.02 billion individuals and 28.34 million companies and organizations by the end of 2019. Many of these had already been raided and some had even been blacklisted from society. In July of 2019, 2.56 million people had been restricted from taking flights, 90,000 people had been prevented from using high-speed rail services, and 300,000 people had been deemed untrustworthy by Chinese courts. Now, the likelihood that we see a system of that extreme implemented here in America by the government is pretty slim. However, what really worries me is not so much the government, but our private banks and our private insurance companies and our private big tech companies, as they seem to be the ones that have extreme power and their own set of rules that they can follow that the government can't. If a privately owned business wants to block you off their website or remove you from their place of business, they are well within their rights to do so. Although that's where things get tricky because as they grow and get more adopted into society, it becomes harder and harder to draw that line. For example, last year, PayPal announced a partnership with Southern Poverty Law Center to investigate the role of certain extremist groups that could impact their service. The information they gathered, they then planned to share with other financial firms and politicians, you know, to use at their own discretion. We're also seeing examples of this at Facebook, which are taking similar measures. They introduce messages that ask users to report their potentially extremist friends, which could simply mean people from certain political parties, or honestly, whatever extremists they chose. It could be extreme cat lovers for all we know. Hopefully by this point in the video though, you're starting to see the power that private businesses have 
have, and I have a feeling most of you weren't aware of what was even going on. Today, there is even a private company that has partnered with MasterCard to develop a credit card that can track your carbon footprint on all your purchases. This would include the food that you buy and even travel expenses. The crazy thing is, is once you're over your carbon limit that I guess they set, it will then cut off your spending and you wouldn't be allowed to use their credit card. I don't know, but to me, that sounds pretty crazy. I wouldn't be surprised if your carbon footprint data was then shared with other companies and businesses who would then be able to limit your access to their products and services. Now, is this truly where our country is headed? Because if you take a step back, we're already getting rid of gas powered cars and enforcing manufacturers to go all electric. As we know today, social media and the internet is the new town square. This used to be the place that you go to to gossip and hear the local drama that's going on in the town. Social media is the 21st century way that that same information is passed along in today's society. The problem, however, is 95% of it is shared through private business. People today cannot effectively function in society if blocked from using Facebook, Twitter, Gmail, Uber, Amazon, PayPal, Venmo, and you know all the other financial transaction systems. I mean, think about it. If you were blacklisted off all of those financial websites or even all the social media websites, do you think you can function in public? Would your job be affected? Would your means of transportation be affected? How would that make you feel? Now, once we cross that line, if certain people can be targeted for whatever reason, then we are undoubtedly creating a soft credit system here in the US, not necessarily ran by the government, but by our private business sectors. Private businesses would then have complete control of people's lives and allowed to mold whatever they wanted to create and push whatever beliefs they had. Imagine living in a world where Apple blocks you from using your phone or Facebook pauses your account because of the photos that you like. They ultimately would have the power to remove you out of society, blacklisting you from the rest of the world. If this sort of system is allowed to grow without some sort of restriction, it would likely be possible that big private businesses could block you out of society entirely and even stop you from making a living. We all know that these big companies are tracking what you do and how you think by what you do online. That's why when you search something up on Google, you'll see it pop up on your TikTok or in an advertisement on another website. They could very easily reward you for your good behavior on their platform. And likewise, they could also block you or restrict you from doing certain things on their platform if you are doing something they don't like. Say the right things and they'll push your content even farther. Say the wrong things and watch it be suppressed and your views disappear. Private businesses could eventually put holds on your transactions. Debit cards could cancel you based on things you purchase. Is this the type of world that you really want to live in? It's truly hard to say how far we'll see private sectors go with this sort of soft credit system. And I'm also not taking the government off the hot seat either because they're not so innocent. We did see our own version of China's health code here in the United States. Not nearly as restrictive, but don't forget the time when we had private businesses like restaurants and fitness centers enforcing customers to show medical statuses under the threat of being shut down. And also don't forget that the feds are looking into central bank digital currencies. You can see it here in the president's executive order. In a previous video on the channel, I spoke about the feds looking into issuing a digital dollar or a central bank digital currency. We went over the pros and cons, but it ties in quite well with the social credit system. If a CBDC was actually made into market, it could have a serious impact on how the government interacts and their insight within the public. This would give them the power to gain specific insight on all Americans' everyday transactions, easily allowing them to sway their policies and beliefs onto the people. This would truly politicize finance to its core on an individual level, literally the dollar. Beautifully said, a government with the power to record and monitor everybody's transactions is powerful enough to impose its own version of morality on those transactions, curtailing them, banning them, stopping them, erasing them, and even denying the ability for a company or individual to send or receive funds for disfavored people or causes. It's truly a crazy topic to consider, but I'm interested to hear what you have to say about this topic down in the comments below. Will this only be a fictional thing we hear about on TV, or will it actually come true here in the US? Otherwise, if you're interested in watching my digital dollar video, make sure to check it out right over here. Otherwise, this wraps up today's episode. Make sure to drop a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.